Ja tervetuloa seuraamaan seminaaria, joka alkaa siis toisin sanottuna ihan tuota pikaa. Vielä ei kuulu. Ollaanko se varma, että tämä toimii? Tämähän ei, tämähän toimii. Aivan loistava. No, eikö toimi nyt? Halo. Mikäs tässä on Hyvin toimi. No ei kyllä toimi. Saanko mä toimimaan, Miki? No nyt toimii. All right. No niin, hyvät naiset ja herrat, tervetuloa seuraamaan Aisen Himmel, eli Iron Sky seminaaria. Me puhutaan englantia tässä seminaarissa, niin kuin Samuli erittäin hyvin tuossa huomautti, ja kuten huomaatte, niin mä tuun vaihtamaan kieltä in a minute. First, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Timo Vuorensolan. I am the director of the seminar. Uh, no, not the seminar. <laughs> of the <laughs> of the film. Uh, I think uh, also I have with me here uh, just one second we have uh, I, I, I need to meet with technical guy. Hello? Hello. And hello to the audience too. We have one uh, wireless microphone for the audience questions so if you got a question please just raise your hand and we'll get the microphone for you. That's true. Anyway, um, we will be answering questions by the end of the seminar, in the end part of the seminar. First, let's take a little while for us blabbering. <laughs> Can we get all the microphones working, please? Okay. <laughs> I, think, I think everybody can hear you quite fine. Actually, we have four producers. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, more producer, better films. That's our motto. Anyway, um, this is us, and we'll be talking with you about Iron Sky, production of Iron Sky, and some other stuff as well. But also, want to talk a little about the internet presence of Iron Sky from a couple of angles and there's also a guest speaker who will be introducing another film interesting one as well but first uh, i would like to ask from the audience how many of you have actually heard about iron sky prior to this uh, seminar very good but not everyone but not everyone and we will be able to fix this in just few seconds uh, We'll start with showing you the Iron Sky teaser. How many of you have seen this? Not everyone. That's very good. So, uh, can we get audio up, lights down? I don't know what's the format here. <laughs> and then we will be playing the teaser right now.
That's the teaser. Thank you, thank you. So, that's the teaser. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's go. And it's not the sequel to Star Wreck. No. Uh, let's first, I want to talk you through with the teaser because that was some sort of a uh, fail boat of an adventure for, <laughs> for a year. We started to work with the teaser in 2007, didn't we, Samuli? Yeah, yeah, we had a had a, about three months to to work with before the can 2007, and uh, I thought that we well we used seven years for Star Trek. Well, this uh, this is only two minute clip, so <laughs> three months that's okay. <laughs> oh yeah, and it was okay. I mean, we did. Uh, we did uh, shoot the film, uh, f shoot the teaser material for the teaser, in just uh, f you know a few weeks after the production of the uh, of the script, the script for the teaser, and uh, and then we started working with the CGI and and uh, we busted our asses for the next two months to get everything done, and we did, we did succeed. We had a teaser in 2007 in the summer, one year ago, but that was maybe the crappiest teaser that we yeah ever I, I watched the teaser and 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 before I, I flew to Cannes film festival and I thought that shit this looks worse than Star Trek <laughs> but yeah we were uh, we were about to release it we actually do have that version there uh, on the Warbonds DVD as well but that said that was a crappy version of the teaser and then we went to Cannes Film Festival and uh, thought that, okay, we need to wor rework on the teaser. We're going to need one year more for the production of the teaser. And we did take that one year and, um, and polished everything to seem the way we wanted them to look like. And when we released the teaser in, I think, 2008, this year's uh, was May something, 9th or something like that, well, it's still uh, not finished, no. because <laughs> I'm still rendering the HD version yeah. right now. Anyway, we, uh, <laughs> we released that uh, uh, the YouTube version of the, of the trailer one year ago from the uh, original release date, and that was actually a very good decision. Uh, it went pretty well on the YouTube. It's been down, uh, viewed around 500,000 times on the YouTube and around 500,000 times on other sources on the Internet. So that was sort of a very good success but it was only because we really polished and, and took that one year to really make that teaser. So, uh, but, but, but the big reason why we did this teaser in the, in the, in the first place was that, that our producers said that, okay, you guys did the Star Trek thing, okay, now you're going to make a uh, you know, different kind of film, you're going to ask for mu much more money, and, and you want people to believe that you can actually make this. You need to be able to show that you have some sort of an idea what you're doing. And we thought that okay, let's let's uh, let's do a teaser uh, that kind of shows, uh, gives sort of a feeling, you know, the basic feeling of the film in some sort of an audiovisual format, and that's that's the reason for the teaser. But also, we wanted for for the people who be, who have been waiting the next film after the Star Trek, kind of something to put their hands on, some sort of a concrete proof that we're actually working on this film. And uh, that was also for the for the fans and and the, and the core people who are interested. So, both ways. Uh, hopefully, we prove the point that that we have a film in mind, and that's actually something. Yeah, and 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 we can do some other things as well. Just besides the sp space battles in Star Trek, we had to prove that as well. So that's the reason why there is no space battles in this teaser. But there will be one in Iron Sky, not just one, few, <laughs> most definitely. Uh, anyway, that's, uh, let's, let's talk about Iron Sky a little bit. Ah. Iron Sky, um, as we mean, each one of us knows that Iron Sky is, is the second film from the producers of Star Wreck. 
Now, when the Star Trek was released in 2005, we started to think that, okay, we need another film. We want to do another film because it seemed that people liked Star Trek and we thought that it would be cool to make another, n another one. And suddenly we had this brilliant idea of let's make another Star Trek. Yeah, we had plenty of ideas what we are going to do next. Well, all the other ideas were pretty crappy. Uh, Timo wrote a couple of scripts or, or, or well, at least <laughs> something he wrote. And, and we, have, we had many different people trying. And uh, I said, let's do next Star Wreck because at least that's what people will at least accept. Ex accept and uh, and wait for, but I think that was the reason why I decided that Star Trek is not an option because because it w it it's too clear, it too obvious to make a Star Trek now. Now we didn't have any idea what kind of film we we should make next, but luckily Jarmo, our our uh, one of the scriptwriters of of Iron Sky uh, and and uh, basically one of the scriptwriters of Star Trek had been reading this web comic called uh, Parking Lot is Full. And for some reason, he, uh, he had bumped into this uh, comic. It's not very specifically funny or anything, but this led him to think about what kind of a person is a Hitler with a television as a head. And that led him to think, that, okay, maybe he's a Hitler from the dark side of the moon, from the far side of the moon. And then he started to think, OK, let's make a movie about Nazis from the far side of the moon. And that was the core idea. And Jarmo, had, uh, Jarmo even had this, uh, this sort of a script in his mind, which really, I think, one of the main characters was uh, television head Hitler. Another one was this uh, hippie girl who falls in love with Hitler. And, uh, and it was actually a love story of, of a sort. <laughs> uh, and it was it was funny. I mean, I had fun time reading it, but I was like, okay, you know, <laughs> it's good, but but I mean, it it wasn't that good in the end. <laughs> so <laughs> so we ended up uh, you know dumping the idea of making a film about Nazis on the moon again. But then when we met uh, Johanna Sinisalo, scriptwriter for Iron Sky and also you know writer in Finland, very well known, she first thing. Uh, well, first she heard about our, our other ideas and said, okay, these are bad. But then, then we thought, okay, let's talk about this moon Nazi idea. And she was like, okay, that sounds good. That's original. And uh, she had this idea of a, of, of a story which we started to work on. And, uh, and um, that was kind of the, the, beginning of, the beginning of Iron Sky. Right now, because uh, every film is obviously made in different phases, uh, I'm going to show you a slide which shows you kind of where we are actually right now and what's going to be what's going to be happening in the future this red line this uh, kind of a red reddish haze kind of tells what we've done and and what's going uh what's what's going to happen in the future uh, we are right now we have, we have done the development phase well not completely we are still developing the script Obviously, uh, we are developing the script. We have the first version of the script. What we did first was that we, we took this uh, synopsis by Johanna and we rewrote it like, I don't know, 10 times or something like that until we got the story right. And then we started working with the first version of the script. And at the same time, we uh, started to gather the main core crew over the Iron Sky, which, which, uh, because we had this, this idea that, okay, uh, now that we're going to make a film like this, we cannot do it kind of the Star Trek way totally because we wanted, we, we wanted to have something, uh, we wanted to advance in certain parts of, of the production. For example, we wanted real actors, we, wanted, uh, we really wanted a good story, we also wanted some production value on the, on the, on the non-CGI stuff and that kind of thing. And this led us to the point where we decided, okay, we're gonna need somebody to help us with this. Yeah, uh, I'm not starring in, in this movie. That's, that's too bad, but it happens. Maybe I will be a background character. No, you will not. <laughs> Maybe we, we do a crossover with Star Trek. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe in, in the sequel. Mm. Uh, fleet on the far side of the moon. <laughs> yeah. Well, that sounds good. Yeah. Anybody get a script? <laughs> so we uh, thought that, okay, this is getting big, uh, the story and production-wise, and, and, and we, we have started our own production company, Energia. 
in 2006, but uh, we still have no expertise in, in, in films as such. So we decided that, hey, what, what about the guys who did the Jade Warrior, Jade Soturi? Uh, they did pretty big film and it did look mm, not finished film. And that was the pos positive thing that got my attention because usually finished films looks finished. <laughs> and uh, and we uh, we had a chat and they were both Tero and uh, and Petri uh, were both interested in in Iron Sky and and that's how our journey began. Now, ne right now we are in sort of a pre-production phase, moving towards production. What we do right, no right now is we're funding the film, which means that we go, uh, you know, lucky chorus to everybody and <laughs> say, we need money. Uh, the point is that uh, we figured out the budget for the film, which is around 3 million euros, which is sort of a big money to come up with, with <laughs> uh, what we have. And uh, thus we started to uh, kind of find partners that can provide us. But also what we're doing uh, is uh, we already started uh, to work on the concept of the film, how it's going to look like, how it's going to feel, who's going to be acting in it, who's going to be doing like stuff like production design and everything. And uh, we are uh, right now extending our core crew to different parts, for example, music, production design, CGI work, and that sort of stuff that can, once we are ready, we can start the full-scale production of the film, which is expected to take place in 2000, early 2009. Hopefully we get to be, sh uh, we, get, we, we are ready to shoot around a year from now, and it will take like, I don't know, three months to shoot the film or something like that, right? Seven. Oh, seven. Oh, that's well, the Star Trek seven way. Years, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, uh, then, uh, obviously, after that, there's a lot of post-production, as we know. Uh, Iron Sky is, is very heavily CGI-based film. There's going to be a lot of space battles, but also a lot of extended sets and uh, green screen work and everything, and it's going to take a huge lot of time. So, we expect to be able to release Iron Sky in 2010. I know that's uh, that sounds pretty uh, pretty you know, far away, but, but for us it's like, it's like tomorrow. Uh, we, we have this feeling that uh, there's too much work to be done before that. So, as we know, making a film is a pretty slow business, right, Samuel? Right, right, right? Mm. How do you think so? I don't oh. know. <laughs> but we don't want to be making this one for the seven years because we have other films in mind as well. <laughs> uh, there are a few problems which are in the way of the production of Iron Sky. For example, the aspect of Nazis, that's, that's not really easy. I mean, uh, everybody can accept that, that, you know, Nazis from the far side of the moon, that's, that's, that's an interesting concept as such, but when you go over to like, people who are very concerned on, for example, their brand or, 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 or you know, stuff that they work on or they produce, they always get a little bit, you know, uh, what's the word, you know, edgy, whatever, and careful around the Nazi subject, and they are like, okay, uh, tell us more. <laughs> but uh, Because, uh, as we know, it's not just Nazis. Uh, there's always, when working with Nazi, uh, Nazi stuff, there's always uh, the history burden, and we need to be able to handle that one and, you know, tell a story that, that doesn't kind of uh, forget what has happened in the past. And even more, now that we're working on a comedy, it's always kind of an edgy subject. Uh, in Germany, they've done a couple of comedies about Nazis, and uh, in, in other countries as well, but for example in Germany, there's this, this one called Mein Führer, in, I, don't, I don't know, when, two years ago, one year ago, something like that. But it's really not a very common subject. People are not making fun out of Nazis that much yet. And when, we, uh, when Jarmo told the idea about the Iron Sky Nazis on the moon, uh, like in Star Trek, I didn't want to take the most obvious route. In Star Trek, uh, the main character, played by me, uh, uh, was a basically the bad guy. And uh, in Iron Sky as well, well, the easiest way and, and e the easiest way would be basically do a, a film. 
you know, uh, where the Nazis are the bad guys. But I don't remember the oh, Independence, Independence Day. Day. Yeah, oh, Independence Day do too. That's a that's the simplest way, and uh, just with Nazis. But I thought that this idea is so cool that I want to make the main character Nazi. He's he's living in the closed environment and well she or he depends but anyways that's even harder to sell to people who have money so your main character is a nazi oh great <laughs> 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 but i mean okay that's a sort of a challenge there also, I mean, making a science fiction fin film in Finland, that's not definitely the easiest thing to do because there hasn't been any science fiction film from Finland. Well, not any, but, you know, most of the films are not science fiction, at least. Uh, but luckily, Elok Vassat, the Finnish Film Foundation, has been very, very kind of interested and into this idea and, uh, and you know, those kind of basic elements that you need to produce a, a, a bigger film. They are interested, so we have... a big challenge here, but I think we can make that happen. Um, one thing I want to tell you about very briefly is, is, is another, another angle to this film. As we know, Star Trek was very heavily internet-based uh, internet film. We also wanted, uh, what, what happened with Star Trek was, was that uh, we had this com a community of people over the internet who wanted to help us with the, with the film. And we started to work on with Iron Sky. We thought that we we're going to bring this kind of same communal element to the Iron Sky as well. And thus, we started to work on a project called uh, Wreck a Movie, which is a collaborative film production platform that we set up on the internet for the Iron Sky production. Big, the, uh, I mean, the big idea for that one is that we have a place where anybody can come in, they can log in, and they can find uh, find interesting stuff to do to help us with the Iron Sky and uh, join the production in the way that they want, which is whichever is their their kind of need. So that's that's called Wreck a Movie. Uh, Da, 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 da. The big idea of Wreck a Movie in the future is that we want to make it kind of a place, sort of a mar marketplace kind of thing, where film productions, people who know how to do stuff and, and money like uh, sponsors and advertisers, they, each one of them can meet up and, uh, and make films happen, films that would be most, uh, most likely either never made or would be very hard to produce. And the big idea is to reach out for those films that, that are not, uh, that are not th sort of the long tail end of the film production, meaning that uh, obviously we have the Hollywood and we have the big productions on the other side, but on the other side we have much more productions, much more people who are interested in working, to, working with productions, and we want to make this wreck movie sort of a uh, place where each one of those people can come in and they can find people to uh, collaborate with to, to produce films which have the same sort of uh, quality and uh, uh, same sort of uh, possibilities that hopefully with, with bigger budget films that would be unreachable other ways. So this means that although Iron Sky is right now the main project on the Wreck Movie platform, we also have some other projects in mind. We're right now working with one but also, in the future, we will be opening the platform so that each one of you who have a film idea or friends have film idea, they can come in over there and they can set up their own production. They can find people from the Iron Sky community and other communities available there to kind of group up with their talent and make films. Kind of the way that we did with Star Wreck and hopefully we, were, we, we do with Iron Sky. And that's kind of our, dr our dream. Uh, Right now, the second film that we have on Wrecking Movie Platform is called Sauna. And uh, I want to tell you a few words about Sauna. Actually, there's another person who is coming over here talking. But first, let's take a little look at the Sauna trailer so we get some sort of an idea what kind of film that is. How, me, uh, how many of you have heard about Sauna, the film? <laughs> <laughs> that was cheap. <laughs> okay, I want to see the hands, sorry. <laughs> okay, good. Okay. Now, let's push this one here. Uh, mm. blah, blah, blah. I don't want to say anything. <laughs> da, da, da.
Sinä tapoitsit tytön. Ei oo, hoi. Sinä mietit, miltä se tuntuu. Raiskata luulot pois sellaiselta nuorelta tytöltä. Посмотрите на прекрасный Дэн Василий Ермолаевич. Посмотрите же. Thank you, and now we'd like to have applause and ask Ukko Kaar to come over to the stage. Ukko, Ukko, hello. Can, you hello. can you tell us a little about sauna? What's, what, what, what's that? What's that? Really what's that? nice, warm place. Recommend yeah. it. No, the um, uh, Timo, so uh, let me begin from the beginning. Restart. Re yeah, Timo was talking about Jade Warrior earlier, and that was the reason why they came to Blind Spot to begin with. And I have a bit of a split personality because I'm working with both Blind Spot and also Bronson Club, which is a new Finnish film production company. And Sona will be our first film, and the director of Sona is AJ Anila, who is also director of Jade Warrior. And there were, uh, Iron Sky has lots of comedy things in their dark science fiction comedy. Sona is really dark film. There's no fun, no comedy in there at all. And it's set back in the 16th century, Finland, when the long war between uh, Finland, Sweden, and Russia just ended, and these guys are drawing the border, and we have a great cast there. It's coming out on 24th of October in Finland. So, why did you come up with the idea of getting this film to wreck a movie? What was the main idea behind that one? Well, it was basically, first I used wreck a movie with Iron Sky, with my work, and then I realized that, hey, this is, perfect place for sauna, although it's a completely different kind of film, but there are lots of people who are interested in this genre. It's horror, thriller, drama, and also that it's a perfect platform for use in marketing, uh, getting marketing ideas from people, and also for, uh, we were in post-production at that point, and we needed some, uh, AJ told me that, hey, uh, there is one bit in the movie where we need a lullaby this old haunting Russian lullaby. And do, do you have any idea where to get that from? And I was like, hey, let's try wreck a movie. And ta-da, it took two months, and one guy came up with a brilliant idea, and now it's going to be in the film. So it's excellent platform, not only for movies which are in pre-production and for science fiction films or anything like that. It's a brilliant platform for basically any kind of production that you can define the core group that might be interested in the film. Thank you. So that's uh, that's basically uh, Wreck a Movie. We will be opening Wreck a Movie for other productions, I would say, in just a few weeks or months, whichever <laughs> turns out to be <laughs> the uh, energy <laughs> schedule <laughs> for things. <laughs> but uh, uh, next, what I want to do by the end of this seminar, because uh, I want to... Can uh, I say something first? Yeah, please, please. Yeah, we want to... Because uh, yeah, I came sorry. here to talk, uh, we wanted to do something extra for you people exclusively. So if you go to bronson.fi slash assembly, there is some cool stuff for you to check out. So please visit that place. I see. And uh, thank you. <laughs> anyway, next, what I want to do is I want to uh, show you what we've... Uh, I want to show you some stuff that we haven't been sh showing to a lot of people 
yet this is for the Iron Sky film. We have a great concept artist who is called Jussi Lehtiniemi, and we have a great team of CGI people who are actually going to be talking here tomorrow about the CGI production of Iron Sky, the workflow of Iron Sky production. Someone is going to be there as well. But uh, what we start out with our CGI first is obviously we need some sort of uh, concept sketches on what the film will look like. And we've been working together with Jussi to kind of produce these few uh, images that somehow represent what will be Iron Sky looking like. So let's take a little look and I'll explain you a few things. As we know, on the far side of the moon, there is this swastika-shaped fortress called Schwarzsonne, uh, uh, and it's, uh, it's a dark and grim place. Uh, it's, it's constantly in a state of war, and it's been working 73 years. The Nazis have been digging inside the moon and building those, uh, their tunnels like the hobbits. No, no, the dog. <laughs> but, blah. That was very stupid, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and they have these you know great hallways. So what I want to, what what I wanted with these uh, these pictures uh, is kind of wanted to define the feeling and you know the lights and the colors that we have. It's almost monochromatic in the f uh, on, the, on the far side of the moon, but there are you know little glimpses of color here and there. But mainly it's 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 very very unhumorous and very monochromatic as colors. This is a living corridor for the Nazis where the Nazis. No, this is one of the nice suburban houses in the, in the front of it, over there. There is uh, probably a happy Nazi family living inside there, <laughs> doing their Nazi daily stuff, whatever they do. <laughs> uh, but the other, other, other part that we have here is, is obviously uh, Nazi UFOs, and that was, I would say, the one of the first uh, uh, inspirations for me for Iron Sky was that, okay, we're going to make a mov movie about Nazis from the far side of the moon. What I want to see is real Nazi UFOs. Uh, the funny thing about Nazi UFOs is that we don't have to make up anything. I mean, uh, people have, uh, you know, the Nazis made those. They, they did actually make a couple of models of, of uh, saucer-shaped ships, which, which they intend to fly. Probably they didn't never succeeded with that. But there is a huge load of uh, great designs which which we can just, you know, advance, put a 73 years of, of, uh, of um, industry work behind them and, and create kind of our own, own personal looking Nazi UFOs. Samuel, do you have something you would like to say about wh wh what do you expect about our space flight scenes? Yes, I have lots to expect. Uh, <laughs> uh, I think uh, most irri irritating thing in, in in Star Trek and, and other science fiction things is usually that there's no damage to ships, visible damage, because everybody has some kind of force field, or and then we see all the green glows from the lasers, and we are not looking into this. Uh, I think we are, we are trying to do everything as much realistic, realistic as possible, because I think uh, I think real uh, kinetic weapons look much more devastating and uh, bigger than, than just a laser beam. So, so we are seeing lots of debris and uh, hull ripping apart, and um, and I think I think I just got the expression or, or comparison today. Uh, or other science fiction uh, space battles are are like uh, well uh, something like uh, today's uh, U.S. U.S. military operations, fast and, and and rapid fire and Iron Sky space battles is more like uh, old westerns films, people shooting not so rapidly but uh, and not so. Precisely, but they are still firing and killing each other. Yeah, you don't have to be very precise if you shoot enough. Uh, another thing which I want to achieve with Iron Sky visuals is obviously is the the size and the mass of things. So one of the biggest issues we had with Iron Sky teaser was was the problem that we wanted things to really look very big, and uh, it took us very long to kind of understand those kind of visual cues which give you some sort of an idea how big things are as we can see over here uh, you can do you can build 
a thing like this, th this shape, but if there is nothing to compare it to, it's, it doesn't look like anything. Yussi has been uh, working on these small visual cues like these, uh, these uh, platforms where people work and uh, you know, small people over there and everything to kind of uh, give, the, uh, give, the, give the impression of the real size. And that's, that's really one important part with the CGI production is that we want things to be destruct, uh, feel like they can uh, f feel that they are big, but also very destructive in, in many ways. And um, there will be more information and, and more talk about the production of the CGI tomorrow when Mikko Monto... Ar Mikko, are you here? No, he's not here. <laughs> uh, when Mikko Monto is... Uh, uh, running a panel about the workflow of the CGI production of Iron Sky, which is a little bit different production from, let's say, those that you've seen from many Hollywood films on the making of when you have these huge halls of people, like 100 people working on CGI's. We have a very small team right now, and it will never be too big of a team, but we need to be very effective with that team. So there's a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, things we need to take care so that we're able to pull this this amount of CGI for this film done. Uh, so tomorrow, two o'clock at the same place, please come over here and, uh, and see, see that one. Uh, I would like to ask uh, if there, uh, let's, let's take a little Q&A in the end, if there are some questions you'd like to be, you'd like us to answer now that we are here on the stage with Samuli. So anybody got any questions? Some hand over there? Just one second, okay, we're going to need a, a microphone over here because they're going to record this and your question will be recorded as well. And, uh, yeah. Okay, so uh, ever since the first Star Wars animations, you've been working very independently, basically doing things all by yourself. And now, oh, now however, you have a quite touchy subject, as you said, and uh, still you're, you need a lot of money, so you need a lot of investors. Um, I was wondering, do you think you'll still be able to work independently on this movie, or are you prepared to make compromises with the investors? Uh, depending on what kind of compromises we are talking about, about the content itself, most definitely not, but uh, about other issues like marketing and that sort of stuff, who knows? But, but uh, the point is that uh, it is still very independent, because we... Uh, um, However we do this, there is that the investors can only either trust us or not trust us. And if they trust us, they, they, they need to trust us so that they let us do whatever, whatever they <laughs> want us to do. But the point is that uh, if an inter investor comes in, they look at us and they say, okay, this is totally a wild card. Are they going to pull this off or not? And if, if they don't trust us, they are definitely not the right investors that we are able to work with because, because they will be pushing their hands too much and everything. So we need to find people who look at Star Trek. They see, okay, these guys have potential. They look at Iron Sky script. This script is good. And then they give us free hands. Make this the way you believe this is going to work. And if not, if, if the people that we're going to work with are not that kind of people, it will be impossible for us to work with them. Because, uh, because, because why? Because we do what we want. Yeah. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> that sounds so stupid. <laughs> anyway. But that's it. Yeah. Okay, more questions. More questions. Over there. In the back, in the back, in the back. Hi. I was just wondering, um, how are you going to distribute this movie? Is it still going to be free or... There is only one answer this that we can give right now because we do not have any idea. We are totally focusing on the content of the film. The fact is that this most definitely will be free on the internet. Whatever we do, uh, de uh, the <laughs> we will not be able to control that. But uh, will it be us who is distributing for free or others, which some people call pirates? We do not know. But uh, uh, anyway, <laughs> it will be somehow available <laughs> on the internet. <laughs> I'm gonna be beheaded for this comment, <laughs> but yeah. uh, it's 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 really really too early to say about the distribution. Anything 
First, we need to get the concept work, and we need to get the script work, and we need to get the production started, and then we really need to start worrying about the uh, about the distribution. But one thing is sure: what I personally want with this film, as as a personal kind of next step, is that I want this also to film theaters. That's gonna be that's gonna be one of the main aims for Iron Skies. That I want it to be on the big screen. But other distribution methods about di digital distribution, we do not have any answers to that. I'm really sorry. I'd like to give you strict answers, but I just cannot. Okay, more questions, please. Over there. You want to say something? Uh, can you answer the question uh, which or what is going to be the language of the film, or will there be several? This film will be English. Primary language will be English, and there will be some Germany. German. So, so the Nazis will be talking in Germany. Okay, more questions. Uh, there is there was one in the front. Yes. So you mentioned the budget is about three million euros. Can you tell us anything about how well the fundraising is going so far? Mm. For example, I'm interested in the war bonds. Oh, you're in. Yeah. Okay, that's a good question. Uh, Few ways that we fund this film is obviously uh, traditional methods, but also we'll be trying these kind of uh, other other ways because a lot of people have been uh, kind of very intrigued about the idea of Iron Sky and that, and you know Nazis on the moon, and uh, they want to help us the way they want. They want to give us some money, but obviously that's not going to be easy. Oh shit! <laughs> Good timing, thanks. <laughs> uh, that's not going to be, uh, you know, accepting donations according to Finnish law is not. Not very easily acceptable. So we built this product called War Bond, and War Bonds, as we know, uh, back in 40s and I think in 50s, al also uh, United States uh, set out these war bonds to fight against uh, d for the se Second World War. So that so the people of United States they bought these war bonds and thus gave money to the to the. Uh, to the war effort, and we kind of bring sort of a paradised idea of this with Iron Sky, when you can uh, join the fight and, and get a war bond. And they've been doing pretty well. Uh, it was uh, actually kind of a surprise for us how <laughs> well people were interested. Obviously, uh, we have set out a certain amount, which is uh, which we have for these uh, war bonds, and uh, there's still uh, stuff left, but. Uh, but it's been doing pretty pretty well, and that's one interesting way why we want to see if, if it is possible to kind of utilize the internet also for the product uh, for for the funding of the film. Yeah, we we are in in the development phase, and we have basically we have secured secured this this phase financially, and uh, and let's see what happens next year when we are. Well, the aim is that we are trying to get the budget uh, completed uh, this year. And so we could continue on the filming part next year. Also, next question, please. Over there. So let's say I'm not creative and I don't have any money, but I still want to contribute to the film. Um, LAUGHTER <laughs> Uh, will there be uh, the possibility to offer compute cycles for rendering the film? That's a very good question. Uh, one thing that we are uh, working with Wrecker Movie stuff is that we're uh, trying to find out way how people could contribute, like set the at home kind of way, uh, rendering power to Iron Sky, because obviously we do not have the possibility to, uh, you know, buy 100,000 computers to our 157 square meters office. They would fill all the floor space there. Uh, so uh, we need to make some creative uh, <laughs> solutions to that. One one interesting way is to find a way where we could kind of uh, build sort of a, uh, through the internet, sort of a possibly kind of a city at home type of rendering thing. But Samuli is a bit skeptic about that, right? Well, uh, it's technically possible. And, uh, well, I haven't done any research, so... We will most certainly try that one because it would be so helpful uh, because the rendering is is so slow. I have a dream that it would work really like so that that each time your computer is Id idle, you can you know push a button or, button or, or get a screensaver working on and, and render and crunch it but b bits but uh, but I said it's it's definitely not that easy because uh, because of the different programs that we use we use uh, at least. Re Read, write, blah, blah. <coughs> Sorry. 
lost ability to speak. We are using three or four different CGI uh, softwares right now and kind of uh, they are not totally uh, compatible together. So it's one one point. Next. Sorry. Um, what if I just keep on blabbering? <laughs> <laughs> okay, more questions, please. Over there, in the back. And this will be also the final question. Um, are you in inspired by uh, Sky Captain and the World of Tomorrow? And for the last question, this is the final solution. Uh, yes, we are very strongly inspired by uh, Sky Captain and the World of Tomorrow production design wise, not maybe the story wise, and not maybe, you know, what it eventually became like. Because I would say I really personally enjoyed that. How many of you people enjoyed that film? Please, more hands, more hands, more hands. I personally, no, <laughs> no, shit. I liked that film. I mean, it had a good heart and it looked pretty well in the, in the places. But I also know the problems that it had. Uh, but but what I really liked about Sky Captain is that it had very strong feeling and 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 kind of a uh, emotion, uh, you know, very strong style, which is easily point, uh, pinpointed coming from there and there and there. So it it had its own personal visual look, and I really want to bring that to uh, Iron Sky. But we are not uh, using so many CGI sets, meaning no. that we are using much more real sets. We yeah. are basically extending the sets. Yeah, that's it. Okay, everybody, I would like to thank you for the seminar. Hopefully this shed a little light on wh where we are right now. Samuli, my friend over here, is uh, around here at the assembly for the next couple of hours. We will be marching on to the Iron Sky uh, Lounge, which is at around the uh, other side of this, 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 this thing, ring, ring, thing. Sto <laughs> stop when you see red. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and uh, we'll be going there. If there are some more questions you'd like to post us, or if there is, uh, if you have uh, interest in, in supporting what we are doing, there is also some merchandise available. Yeah, that's one way of helping us. <laughs> yes, mm. yes. Thank you very much, and uh, let's have a little. Hands together, please. I love it. Thank you, and have a good assembly. And remember, tomorrow, Thank come you. back.